Good morning. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed, ready to go and ready to die? <laughs> Everyone say it's a good day to die. <laughs> well, we had an exciting day yesterday. Thank everybody for your cooperation and movement of material and death, training for training and training and and training and training and training. We never stop training, amen? Would you turn to Psalm 50-something? Oh, there it is. 51. Hallelujah. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. Psalm 51. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 1. It's a great psalm to speak. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, okay? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my what? My transgressions. Those are the acts of cooperation with sin, which is the presence of evil. It's called a transgression. So you'll always be attacked by the presence of evil. It's called sin. That's what the presence of evil is. It's called sin. But they carry a voice and an influence to cause you to cooperate or agree with what they're telling you. That is called a stranger or a stranger's voice. Does everybody get it? If you agree with it, you cooperate with it, you commit a transgression. He said, so blot out my transgressions. In other words, blot out all the things that I cooperated and agreed with evil. Wash me thoroughly from my what? Iniquities. Why? Because when you do that, it brings a curse on you and your family line. That's what's called an iniquity. Then he said, cleanse me from my what? Sins. In other words, remove from me all impurities of the presence of evil. He said, I acknowledge my transgressions. Those are my acts. And my sin is always before me. So evil is always before us. Against you only... You only have I what? Sin. And done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in what? Iniquity. Everybody's brought forth in iniquity. It's an ancestral curse brought down. You and I were born in sin. That's why you need to be born again. That's a reality. You know, I never knew when people said, I'm born again. I'm thinking, what the heck? Uh, what do you do, go into a box and get born again? You know, Come out brand new or something? I don't know. I never knew. I, of course, I never knew what a Christian was until I met Christ. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother, what? Conceived me. Behold, you desire truth where? In my inward parts, my heart, and in my members. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssops and clean, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones we have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. And do what? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That was a cry. Why? Because it was an individual who was acknowledging. And Psalmist was, David was acknowledging his sin, his transgression. How many of y'all know David was peeping David at one time? Amen? He committed a lot of things. But he was a man after God's heart. Amen? And, and so in this one thing, he was crying, was, Lord, created me a clean heart. And, and keep my spirit steadfast so I'm continually going after you. 
And please don't take your presence from me. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me because I can't make it without you. That is a cry that you and I should have every single day. In verse, tw uh, in verse 12, restore to me the what? The joy of your salvation and uphold me by your what? Generous spirit. Then I will what? Teach. Everyone said I'm called to be a teacher. I will teach transgressors. Those are the ones that cooperate with the voice of the stranger. Transgressors, your ways. Your way what? Out of escape. <clears throat> and sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. <clears throat> you do not delight <coughs> in burnt offering. Now you've got to remember, at David's time, this is what it was all about, <coughs> sacrifice and burnt offering. But there was something about David that he knew about God. He knew God's heart. Why? He was a man after God's heart. He actually knew what pleased God. Remember, the anointing was on him. He realized something very important. It wasn't about the blood sacrifices because they sacrificed every time before they went out to war. They offered animals as a sacrifice <coughs> and he said man it's not that's not what what you desire i know that because i know you see every one of us should begin to know him there should be a desire to want to know him we have to ask the question do i know him today's teaching is to know him to know him and that is a requirement do you actually really know him, or do you know about him? So he said, here it is. You don't require any of this stuff. In verse 17, he said, the sacrifices of God are a what? Broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not what? Despise. Why? That's being broken. You are in a place where you know that. You are nothing and can do nothing without him. That is a fine line. This is an area what maintains you to walk with him in the spirit. See, there's a fine line of walking in the spirit, walking in the soul, and walking in the flesh. When we're really walking in the spirit and being filled with the spirit, there's an area where main, there's a requirement of maintaining a brokenness, a humbleness. That you know that you can't exist. And when you step over that line, it is repulsive to you. Amen? Verse 18. Do good, do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build walls of Jerusalem. So, hey, listen. Is it the will of God to build walls? Hello. Try and tell the Democrats that. It's amazing. They got walls all around their, every home they own. There's fences, security, military. <laughs> but they want to take America's guns away and bring down the wall. <laughs> Verse 19. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of what? Righteousness with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. But what is his requirement? A broken heart, right? A clean heart, pure hands. What's he want? He wants to know whether you know him, to know him. He desires truth in our inward heart, our inward parts, and desires to so have clean hands and a pure heart. In his presence of knowing him. Reality is of his presence, his spirit. Only with a broken heart and a broken spirit, humbled and surrendered, and totally sold out, can you really know him? We must be individuals that are after God's heart. The moment you sway from God, chasing his heart. In other words, you should be living a life that says, I want to please you no matter what. I don't care what it is. I want to please you. Psalm 34.
Psalm 34 and verse 8. To know him. Now there is a process of knowing him. Amen. When you first meet someone, right, you get introduced, you shake hands and say hi. So there's an introduction. When you got saved, you said hi. <laughs> he said welcome. But then there's a process of beginning to know him. That's why you go through all kinds of stuff. He wants to show how great he is and how much he loves you. Even when we blow it and we think he's left us and all the other other stuff and all the things we've done and, and he never leaves us nor forsakes us. He just waits for us. Amen? But he wants to get us to a place where we don't falter. See, when you know him, you know he's faithful. You know he does far above all you could ever ask or think. The problem is, is he, you know that he doesn't do it in your time. You know, he usually hangs you off the cliff for a few. Why? Because he wants to know if you'll hold on while you're hanging. He wants to know if you know that you're going to pull him out, that he's going to pull you out. That's how you know him. So you will know him through your trials and tribulations. You will know him by circumstances that happen in your life. Everything about me and you being on this planet is, to, is the process of learning to know him. Does everybody get it? Why? Because only those who know him are going home with him. Oh, happy days. Verse 8, what's it say? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who what? Trusts him. Now, can you know, trust someone you don't know? Amen. See, when God knows you know him, he knows he can trust you. So there's a process of earning trust, isn't there? Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no what? Want, what also is want? Lack. Amen. To those who what? Fear him. Why? Because they fear him because they know him. If you don't know him, you can't reverence him. You can't honor him. You can't. It's hard to respect him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who what? Seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, and listen to me. I'm going to teach you the fear of the Lord. In other words, I'm going to teach you the process of knowing him. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do what? Do good. Seek peace and pursue it. You know, one of the things is departing from evil. So as a believer, which is a follower, we are always walking in the process of walk away. The process of walk away. You're always walking away from evil. Your past is evil. Your old man is evil. It's like you're carrying, the new man's carrying the old man on the back. And the old man's going, trying to grab everything from the old. And when you have taken dominion over him, he begins to say goodbye. Get that picture in your mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord does what? Hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. You know, it's amazing how many times people try to deliver themselves out of their troubles. And they will not wait on the Lord. Because you know why? They don't know him. The Lord is near to those who have a what? Well, snap. He's near to those 
who have a broken heart and saved such as have a contrite spirit. Isn't that what pleases God? Amen. So he's near to those. To know him is to trust him, to honor him, reverence him, respect him. To guard your words and actions and works and agreements that cause separation or long-distance relationship. You know that there's things that he doesn't approve of. You already know it. Everybody knows it. When you were born again with the Spirit, you know it. But the old man will try to justify it. Justification comes because of unknowing him. There, in other words, the enemy tries to bring a distance of no longer being after God's heart. But chasing your own heart. Is everybody okay? It says he is near to those with a broken heart and contrary spirit. Only the way to know him is if you're near him. Does everybody get it? You will only know him by being close to him. Psalm 32. happy days. When I kept silent, verse 3, Psalm 32, verse 3, when I kept silent, in other words, when I did not repent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin. See, I really believe that the translators of this Bible, remember, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one who wrote the Word. Amen? He didn't translate it all, though. Does everybody get it? Not that he wasn't in trying to impart individuals to translate it correctly. But in many of the translations, you will find that certain words, in other words, like sin, transgression, and iniquity, sometimes they follow, fall out of order, but in reality, he means trying, they're trying to mean the same thing. It's still offensive to God, whether it's a sin, transgression, or iniquity. Amen? Iniquity. So you'll have to interpret what the Word is saying by the Spirit of God. But I think he really allows that to happen. Why? Because he don't. Only things that are revealed to those who are close to him. I acknowledge my sin to you I, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my what? Transgression. So did he acknowledge all areas? Yes. To the Lord. You forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be what? Found. Surely in the flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. So the more you sow in the spirit of singing, you're actually bringing deliverance. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Wrong one. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my what? With my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows will be the wick to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. How many of y'all like, want mercy? See, mercy is consideration. In other words, if you're close to the Lord, mercy always surrounds you. Why? Because every time something comes up, you go, Lord. See, mercy says, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. Now, if you're close to him, he's going to always acknowledge you. Something That's called mercy. Grace is the way of escape. So we want mercy and we want grace. So when he acknowledges us, what's he always give us? A plan of escape. Does everybody get that? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Many sorrows will be the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord's mercy so surround him, be, surround him, be glad in the Lord and, and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. 
<clears throat> to know him is to trust him and that he has an endless supply of everything we need. Although we always need it right now. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I said, Lord, what took you so long? <laughs> and of course, you know, it's a good day to die, guy. You know. I'm promoting your death. <clears throat> to know him is to trust that he has an endless supply of everything we need. <laughs> He says, feed on my faithfulness, doesn't he? <clears throat> In 1 John chapter 2. To know him. You know, you may walk up to many people on, on the street and whatever and say, do you know Jesus? Yeah, I'm really religious. You don't know him. Amen. Yeah, I'm really spiritual. You don't know him. I know Jesus. I'm really spiritual. It's pretty hilarious because you know what? Not many people know him. They know about him. They'll say, well, I, I, I go to this organization church or yes I read the Bible but do you know him now did the apostles have a Bible no they had the spirit of God that's how they knew him amen I used to, when I was ministering in a jail I used to tell the guys put your Bible away let's put the Bible away for a few days and let's see what the Spirit tells you. I can't live without my Bible. You can't live without the Spirit. See, because you can fall into so much religiosity. Remember, the letter kills and the Spirit brings what? Life. He wants you to know Him. This is the, the process. This is an assistance to knowing Him. You and I should be a thirst and hungry for not only His Word, but more for His presence. Because without his presence, you and I are nothing. And John, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Now by this we know that we know him. Hello. We what? Know him. If we what? Keep his commandments. So there's an area where there are those who are obedient and disobedient. Two types of Christians. One that knows him and one doesn't. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. In other words, when God says something, is everything that God says is a command. Amen? But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. In what? Character. In the character of the fruits and practicing righteousness, of departing from evil, of not associating with it, not agreeing with it. Jesus exposed it. Amen? Living a life sanctified unto the Lord. Testing to know him. We, we should be testing and examining ourselves whether we know him or not. Amen? <clears throat> Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and you. Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brothers in the darkness. Now, he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. 
But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. In other words, this is a test self-examination. Testing to know. How many know God will test us to know him? He wants to know whether we know him. He wants to know whether he can trust us. To know him is also to know his voice. Amen? Matthew 7, verse 21. He says, if you love me, you will obey me. In other words, if you know him, you obey him. Matthew 7. To know him. <clears throat> How many of y'all know it's, you can serve someone you don't know? You may go work at a company, and you'll never meet the owner. Amen? So you may serve in that company, but you'll never meet the owner. See, there are many out there who serve, but don't know him. And because they don't know him, they practice lawlessness. But they serve. Verse 21. Let's speak it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Why? Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall because it was founded on the rock. Why? Because they were following him. But everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell. But not only did it fall, but great was its fall. Amen. How many of y'all know rebellion, disobedience, selfishness, love of the world, sin is all lawlessness. That's all lawlessness. Again, there are people that serve but don't know him. And they, don't, they think that their serving is justifying their lawlessness. They're in for a big surprise. John 10. To know him. <clears throat> Everybody okay? John chapter 10 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and his sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. He goes where? Before them. And the sheep do what? Follow him. This is what belief is. Follow him. We hear his voice. We know him. And we want to know him more. He wants to be in every part of our life, and we want to be in every part of his life. And they follow him. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he brings, in verse 4, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a what? A stranger. But will flee from him. The problem is, is when people don't know him, they don't flee from the stranger. And the stranger has many voices. That's what he always likes to imitate God. He likes to imitate the Holy Spirit. 
It says here, but we're not to know the voice of the stranger. But you know what? We really do know the voice of the stranger. We know the voice of the stranger. We know the voice of the flesh. We know the voice of the soul. We know the voice of the past. We know the voice of rebellion. We know the voice of the lust. We didn't know the voice of sin. We know the voice of the presence of evil. We know the voice. Because, but the problem is a person's spirit is not strong enough. They're justifying emotion. See, that's how the enemy attacks you. He brings you a word that leads to an emotion. He releases a word that brings to an emotion. How many of you know oppression is an emotion? Amen. People run to medication. Why do people, many, many people run to medication for antidepressants and all that? Why? Because their spirit's not strong enough to overcome. They're still walk, living in the soul, not in the spirit. Is everybody Okay. In verse 6, Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. That's why he was rebuking the Pharisees and Sadducees. Because the voice of the shepherd, the shepherd was in front of them. And they kept rejecting him. Jesus wept because they missed the time of their visitation, his visitation to them. He came to lead them out, and they rejected the lead out. How many times did God visit people through his spirit, through angels? Why do you think they, the Jews ended up and the Hebrews ended up in the wilderness for 400 years? Or 40 years, I'm sorry. <laughs> they were in slavery 400 years. But they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Why? God tried to bring them out. Didn't he use Moses to rescue them? But how many people made it from the original? Two out of millions. That's not a very good percentage. Why? Because they rejected his leading. They, you know, fear is the number one thing. People have a hard time of letting go because fear is more stronger than the leading of the spirit. Fear. What does the word tell us? We're to hate everything except for him. He's got to be number one. He says, verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. Listen, if stealing, killing, and destroying is happening in your life, hello, something's not right. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. And that isn't about financial. You can be the poorest man in the world and be the happiest. Believe me, when I had nothing, nothing, I lost it all. My living room furniture was cardboard boxes. I was happy. Why? Because I was the richest man in the world as far as I was concerned. I met the king of glory. I knew the truth. That's all I ever wanted was to know the truth anyways. You know what? That's all humanity wants to know is what the heck is the truth? What am I doing on this planet? What, what's my purpose? That's all mankind wants to know. But see, they're trying to set their own destiny instead of allowing God, the creator, set their destiny. And there's a difference. And that's the promotion everywhere. Here, set your own destiny. Here, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. Everything from the worldly point of view instead of from a godly point of view. Destiny is not established without fruits of righteousness. Amen? Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling, he who is not a shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. 
And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I will bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. This command I have received from my Father. Wow. Phenomenal. To know him is to know his voice and leading. To know conviction. See, if you know him, you obey him. Amen? To, you know what? You and I should always look for conviction. Always look for correction. Always look for direction. Why? Because it brings protection. Amen? Lord, is this right? I mean, is this what you want me to do? Is this, this what I'm supposed to be doing today? Am I, you know, please establish my steps and my thoughts. And, and if I miss you, just kick me in the butt. Do something. Shut the doors that's uh, uh, not of you and open the door that is of you. See, he's looking for an open conversation. He wants to know if you're totally relying on him. This is how we know him. And we know, we know that somehow, some way, something's going to work to the good. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to get what you want. Amen? See, that's how people know, oh, I didn't get what I wanted. Well, maybe you're not supposed to. Or maybe it's not God's time just because you didn't get what you wanted. But the Word says, to, if you know Him, ask Him and you will receive. You will receive. You just don't know when. But it's coming. Amen? <laughs> and maybe there's a course change. So you're still on the same course when God's changed course. And you're still praying for the same things on your course when He says, hold on a second. You're on the wrong street. You've taken, listen, quit listening to Google. And be led by the Spirit. Amen. Oh, happy days. First Peter chapter 5. Yes, God can change course. That's why he says, Know my voice and follow me. Because when he turns left, it doesn't mean turn right. When he says I-4, it doesn't mean I-95. Now, I'll never forget one time, and you've probably heard this over. I was, because I've. I, I would drive around, and he would say, let's go. And I would drive around, and we'd be. What do you want to do? Uh, pull in here, do this, do whatever. And uh, so he puts on my heart. He says, I, I want you to get on I-4. And so he, and I, he said, go west. And I'm thinking, and, I'm, and I was getting ready to get on the, on the entrance. And I knew that this entrance was east. Or at least I thought it was. And, and it said, and, and the sign changed on me. And next thing I found myself going west on I-4. Because I passed one of the other signs that was on I-4. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I'm going the wrong way. No, you're going the right way. And then the sign came up that I was doing the right. I'm thinking, whoa. It was almost like he shortcut me. So I would go the right direction. And there was a person on the side of the road Hitchhiking. He said, stop, pick that man up. He prepared me ahead of time. You always prepare you ahead of time. There's somebody on the side of the road, prepare to stop and pick him up. Because it's pretty hard if you finally just see him and you're on I-4 or the turnpike and go, oh, they missed that one. And that's happened. <laughs> and I picked this guy up and got to minister to him for a while and whatever. And, but again, he can alter anything. He can change it all. I can't tell you how many times in the 46 Chrysler limousine that I used to drive, and it would break down. And he'd say, guy, your car is no different than a body. Lay hands on that thing. Snap. Come out. 
in the name of Jesus. And Lord, whatever it is, repair it or show me what I'm supposed to do. Go start your car. Okay. <laughs> Gone. And there would be times, man, he'd say, go, get in your car. Go, I got to show you something. Right. I'll be driving. There's an elderly couple on the side of the road, broke down. He said, pick them up and chauffeur them home. They get in this 46 Chrysler limo. I chauffeured, put them in the back. It's got Jesus and gold on the side. I used to chauffeur the Lord. He'd tell me where to go. I'd do whatever. That's how my life was. That's how my life is. I want to know him. I want to obey him. I want to be led by him. And I don't want to miss him. I want to be a man after God's heart so that I know everything that I'm doing is pleasing him. God willing. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. Oh, happy days. Verse 8. To know him. You know, when people get sick, get plagued, it, you'll know whether they know him or not. Does everybody understand it? When people get sick and whatever, you'll know whether they know him or not. When people get, when certain circumstances happen in their lives, trials, tribulations, you'll know whether you know them or not. You know. That fruit of knowing him will determine. Because it, it doesn't happen when, you're, when there's nothing happening. Everybody can say, yeah, I know him, yeah, he's great, this, that, whatever, you know, until something happens. Oh, God, where are you? You love me. Everybody knows that, but see, that's a feeling. And, and I'm not saying you're not going to sense that. Lord, where are you? But don't believe it. Amen. Don't follow the, where are you? It says, he's close and near to us, no matter what. See, we cannot go by how we feel. We must maintain the, the process of knowing him. That's how we turn more and more into his image and likeness. We can't any, allow any, anything to bring doubt, fear, or unbelief. Because it was a, it was a disconnect. Amen? Verse 8. Be what? Sober. That means what? Be alert. Be vigilant means consistent. So be alert and be consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks around with a big mouth. Right? Okay, that means he's got a load. When he speaks, he speaks multiple voices. There are strangers all over. They all follow him. So this is how the enemy attacks. By a voice. That's why we have, who told you that? If everybody would get that, it would be wonderful. Who told you that? Oh. And I'm not saying you're not going to get sick. Or you're going to touch something. The devil, you know, it's what we touch. You don't know what doorknob, what germs are on that doorknob or whatever. Amen? You don't know what's going on, what's in the atmosphere sometimes. You just don't know. You're, you're, but it's what you do with it. Amen? It's how you respond or react. You know, Lord, I feel like crap today. But I know... That by your stripes I'm healed. So what can I take, Lord, that will help me get through this for cooperating with your healing? Amen? It's a real simple. Don't get granola. Amen? I ain't taking nothing. I'm just going to suffer for Jesus. Well, go ahead. Oh, I can't go to work today. Well, why didn't you help take something? No, I'm suffering for Jesus. No, you're an idiot. Hello. I've heard, I don't take aspirin. I don't take Advil. I don't take anything. Are you in pain? Yes, and I can't go to work. I can't do nothing. Well, stupid. What do you think God created those things for? Hallelujah. So 
Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Because you know that the voice of the stranger is seeking you out. Amen? It says resist him. In other words, just say no. It's been on the bumper stickers for years. I think I grew up with it on there. It used to kill me. Just say no. Real, you try and say no. Being demonized and possessed, try and say no. When you got 40 demons in your car while you're driving, they're all saying, feed me, feed me, feed me. Hallelujah. And that used to tick me off, man. I'd see that sign. I'd like to drive into the back of that car. <laughs> that was BC. Now I thank God for it. Gosh, I wish I would have listened a long time ago when I see it now. <laughs> Why didn't I just say no? I didn't know how. I didn't have the power to say no. Just no was not going to remove a spirit. Hello? He had to be backed by the eternal spirit. Resist him. Steadfast. Continuously resist him. Amen? In the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're never the only one going through it. When you hear that, you're the only one. The enemy's trying to bring you oppression. You're the only one. I can't believe you did this. You're right. Oh, God. Listen, we all make mistakes. Amen? But it's what you do with it. Everything, when you know is a mistake, it's to make a correction. So don't we, we don't repeat them. Amen? Is everybody okay? Now listen to this. Watch this. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have what? Suffered a while. That's learning. The process of knowing him. Perfect. Establish. Strengthen and what? Settle you so that you are not moved. So that you are consistent. You are vigilant. You are going after his heart. What's he trying to do? Turn you from ordinary to extraordinary. From where? Ordinary to extraordinary. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thess. Is everybody okay? Glory. Verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound what? More and more. In other words, go at more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. If you're a person after God's heart and you really want to know him, that desire to please him will always be there. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. Can you know him without being sanctified? It's impossible. That you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in the sanctification and honor, not in passion of loss, like the Gentiles who do not know God. There's a difference. You know him. So there's a difference. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to what? Uncleanness, but to in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who also has given us the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. In verse 14. And we know this. What does it say? Do not be unevenly yoked with, together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? 
And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, if you'll do this, what does he say? Come out from among them. That's called sanctification. Be separate, says the Lord, and don't what? Touch what is unclean, and I will receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Now, something is, this morning in my prayer time, and as I began to have a discussion with the Lord this morning, one of the things he shared with me, I, thought, I found it quite profound. He said, in humanity, we're all under one blood. We're all from one blood. Amen? But in the kingdom of God, we're under another blood. And I was having a discussion about my daughter. I have an older daughter that doesn't communicate with me. And uh, I said, Lord, what about, he said, she's not your daughter. He said, those are labels. Let me explain this to you. There's a difference between the blood of the flesh and the blood of the spirit. Amen? We're so caught up in labels. He said, labels are just destroying people. He said, my sons and daughters are the ones that follow me. And they should be your sons and daughters. Those that don't follow me are not my sons and daughters. He said, but children are different. Because children need to be weaned. They need to be taught. They need to be chastised. They need to be, amen? So even though that we have some 40 and 50-year-old children, amen, they're still, we're still, te they're still teenagers, they're young. So they have to learn. God is not forsaking them. But you got to remember something. These are labels. Children, daughters, sons. These are just labels that have been placed to define something. But God knows the person. And if you know God, you know the person. Does everybody understand that? So there are things that we call labels, saying that we love certain things and whatever, and we don't even know, know certain things. Anything that is under his blood is different than what's under human blood. It's different. It's a totally different thing. Totally. And he said to me, now this, this was the scripture, he said, those that are sanctified under my blood are my sons and daughters. Those that are not are not my sons and daughters. They may be human sons and daughters, but they are not my sons and daughters. Does everybody get it? So there's a difference. So we go back to just that label again. Humanity looks at sons and daughters as parts of a family. But there's a difference between the family of eternity and the family of the temporary. Amen? That's why we pray for those that are family members that they get saved and make it home. Amen? Does everybody understand? Because they don't know him, do they? Because if they knew him, they would follow him. Hallelujah. Philippians 3. Oh, happy days. How many of you all know that God knows when to pull somebody out of darkness? <laughs> he knew exactly when to pull you out. Amen. He gave you other opportunities. Amen. There were opportunities that we rejected, but then there was a time he was saying, man, let's go. It's like he got our attention. But there were times when there was gentle, come on, but then there was the time when it was like, bam, I'm going to die. 
and I'm going to hell. And I don't want to do that. That was when he really got our attention. So there's that process of knowing him, even as we're going through the process now. It's not about the fear of going to hell. Amen? But knowing that it still can happen. See, when you lose the fear of God, you better bring the other fear up. The fear of what? That he can destroy you. When you begin to walk away from God and do your own thing, being led by the voice of the stranger, amen, that's when the fear of God is diminished, but then there should be a fear of what's going to happen to me, amen. In Philippians 3, in verse 1, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is what? Saved. So Paul was given the same message many times. Beware of what? Dogs. Now, he wasn't talking about your neighborhood doggy. Amen? We got this little choo choo wow on our block. I think he's the uh, neighborhood watchdog. <laughs> he's a character, man. I, you can hear him every morning, you know, and he's attacking somebody. Most of the time, his own shadow. So beware of dogs. Those are demonized individuals. Beware of evil workers. Beware of mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the what? Flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, of <laughs> concerning a law, a, pro, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I count lost for Christ. These I count lost for Christ. This is where we are always walking away, departing from self, past, emotional desires, all of these things, and stepping into Christ. Always. We live a life of disconnect to connect. Is everybody okay? Amen? We count all things lost for Christ's fellowship. To know him in the power of his resurrection. To know his sufferings. Always in the process of denying ourselves, picking up the cross to fight and follow. We live a life of walk away. From a life of the past, flesh and emotions and relationships, talents and abilities, desires, and old ways of the old nature. Always saying goodbye <laughs> to everything of our past. We walk away from it. And we are being made new in the nature of Christ Jesus. Remember, your old man's character is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Now, there's a spirit of pride. There's a spirit of lust. Amen? Amen? But the old man, it's its nature. You can't cast it out. There's a difference. That's called your flesh. You can't cast out your flesh. You must crucify it. That's why it's important to stay filled and possessed by the Spirit of God. To keep out a spirit of pride. To keep out a spirit of perversion. To keep out lust. To keep these things out. But you will be influenced by the old man. Amen? If you don't stay filled, dressed, and possessed and keep it crucified. Why? Because your old man has got a lot of voices. He's got a lot of memory. Amen? You start connecting and reconnecting into that old man. It's like reconnecting into a, a computer. What do you call those things? A, a, what is that? Drive? Something drive? Flash drive. The old man flash drive, plugs it into your new computer, poof, messes it all up, man. So we're constantly walking away from that old nature and putting on a new nature, Colossians 3. And then one more scripture. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. In verse 1, 
If then you were raised with Christ, seek. Everyone say seek. Those things which are above. Which Christ, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your desires, your thoughts on the things on above, not on the things on the earth. Why? Because you, you can't be a person after God's heart if you're still seeking, every, if everything on the earth is priority compared to eternally. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died. Everyone say, I died. And your life is hidden in Christ, in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, think about that. Christ is our life now. We are not. You know, there's a difference. Christ is our life now. We got to worship Christ, who is our life now. Stay connected and to know him, who is our life now. Christ, who is our life now. Wow. When Christ, who is our life now, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory, if he's your life. Therefore, put to death what? Your members, verse 5 which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man. See, he's telling you everything about the old man with his what? Desires, his deeds, and have put on the new man. Who's responsible to put on the new man? Ours. Who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Does everybody get it? Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free. But Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint, throw it in the garbage. Amen? Against another, even Christ forgave you, so you also do the same. Hallelujah. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Put to death the old past. Put to death those voices of strangers. Put to death. And I'm going to close at 1 John 3. We want to be men and women after God's heart. And we want to know him and behold his glory. You know, there's a song that we sing, to know him, amen? And in it says, to know him, we're never to worry for our life. To know him, we're never to give in to compromise. These are fruits of knowing him. To know him is to want to tell the world about him. To know him to, is to understand that there is no life without him. To know him is to hear his voice when he calls. To know him is to catch a brother or sister when they're falling. To know him is to feel the pain of the brokenhearted. To know him is to leave all behind. To know him is to know he's the only one. To know him. Amen? Looking beyond the temporary to know him. Why? Because you're connected to the eternal. To know him. You know, one of the things knowing him is that we know that he's enough. He's our fulfillment. To know him. Everything about our rescue was to know him. Amen. We are introduced now through the process of knowing him. In the process of knowing him, there's a process of obeying him. He always makes a way of escape. In verse 1, Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know him because it did not, does not know us because it doesn't know him. Again, the world doesn't know you. 
your, even your family doesn't know you. They may know that you're one of their kids, <laughs> you're a relative, your aunt or uncle, or you're even one of their mothers or fathers. But after you got saved, filled with the Spirit of God, they don't know you no more. They're not going to understand you until they're unplugged and get connected to the Father. Amen? Verse 3. Uh, I believe. Uh, beloved, let's go to verse 2 again. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he what? As he is. So we will be like him. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might take, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. In other words, he does not associate with the presence of evil. For his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this we know the children of God and the children of devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. Very simple. Amen. The world will not know you. They don't know your identity. See, because the world is searching for an identity, they're trying to imitate something of the world. The world tells us that we're to imitate God. So the world is trying to imitate worldliness. We're trying to imitate the Creator. There's a difference. Because we're under a different blood than the world. To know Him is a responsibility for each and every believer. And you will know those who know them, know Him by their fruit. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We are honored and blessed. And we want to know You, Dad, even more. More and more and more. Bring revelation, confirmation, manifestation. Fill us, kill us, and possess us. Do whatever you got to do. But we want to know you. We want to maintain a thirst and hunger for you. We want to be men and women after your heart. Help us to say goodbye to the world. And say welcome to heaven. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God.